Today on Animal Airport, Ross sets a trap for an uninvited guest. There is the A parrot poses a problem for Debs. If I can identify it, um, which I may or may not be able to do. And Stuart cuts it fine with a departing dog. It's already been 20 minutes. London Heathrow, one of the world's busiest airports. Every year, 500,000 flights arrive and depart, carrying 70 million human passengers and 40 million animals and fish. And while the humans report to passport control, the animals head to the animal reception centre, known as the Ark. The Ark is run by 31 animal health officers. They're called in for any animal incidents around Heathrow. Oh, Mark, William. This morning, Supervisor Ross is on his way to the aircraft maintenance yards on the southeast corner of the airport. 31-year-old Ross has been at the Ark for 10 years and working with animals for 16. This morning, he's had an unusual call, which will test his considerable experience. Yes, we've had a uh, phone call from um, British Airways Engineering, where they do um, their aircraft maintenance. They've had a, a muntjac deer that's, um, that's been sort of in their compound now over a week, and they're starting to get a little bit concerned. Muntjac deer, originally from Southeast Asia, are the smallest deer in the UK. They weigh just 15 kilos, but one could still do serious damage if it found its way onto a runway. Waiting for Ross are the two aircraft engineers who first spotted the deer. How you going, all right? Yeah, all right, mate. All right, mate. Uh, where should I dump this? Just up here, mate. Yeah, no. Uh... Are we allowed in there or not? Yeah, we got a key. Oh, right, cool. It's trapped in a fenced-off area used to store old airport machinery. So we just... Looking around, it looks like we could probably corner it if we needed to. Ross's first idea is to drive the deer back towards the gate. Just make loads of noise, Don, and just try and get it out. Come on, come on. Sometimes you just have to improvise. It looks like Don spotted it over there. His old tail bobbing up there. Run through here. Oh, the drop ins. Once I've seen it, I did like, you know, I just try and herd it into one corner. But it's such a big expanse, man. I think it will struggle. Mind that deer, their flight response is just to, to hunker down, to make them so low and they'll sit still. So, so unless it's moving around, we'll struggle to find it. Shot straight through there. Suddenly, the engineers spot the deer again. There he is, look at that. Right. Right. I'm glad you saw it. Yeah, no. You're not, you're not going mad. You're not losing your sanity. Munjack deer can run up to 30 miles per hour. Ross is setting a trap to try to catch it. He'll put food in as bait. When the deer walks in to eat, the door will snap shut behind it. All good to go. Hopefully, so we'll, we'll come back tomorrow. Um, hopefully we'll have a, a, a deer in there and we can move it somewhere a bit more appropriate. For people jet-setting around the globe, the experience isn't always pleasant. Air sickness is a common complaint. Whatever happens to humans can also happen to animals. Michaela the Terrier has just completed a 10-hour flight from Texas. She hasn't enjoyed it one bit. ARC staff have called in vet Andrew to make sure it's nothing more sinister than air sickness. Just how we feel if everything's OK there, if he hasn't got any pain. She's still, um, st still quite alert and dry, so... But Michaela isn't ending her journey in London. Her owners are waiting for her in Ghana. She's supposed to be on a flight in six hours. To be honest, it doesn't look too serious. It looks whether she's got a motion sickness or she's just stressed that she went on the car, on the plane, and trouble here, but that 
because she's supposed to be flying today to Ghana, we just have to assess her whether she is going to be fit to fly to be honest. 32 year old animal health officer Anne has been at the Ark for 11 years. She'll be in charge of cleaning up Michaela and settling her into a kennel. She seemed quite happy in herself. She might have just had the wrong thing to eat just before coming on the plane, or if her owners were worried that she was going to get hungry, they might have fed her when it probably she would have been better off without food. So we, did, we just don't know because we're not in contact with the owner at the moment. The plan is to wait and see if Michaela improves in the next few hours. But Anne's barely out of the door before there's news. I literally just had time to wash my hands and change my gown because uh, she's actually been sick again. So I'm just going to have a look and see, um, tidy her bed up. Sorry, honey, I disturb you. Hello. I just left her for a couple of minutes and she was sick again. So I just wanted to kind of tidy up her bed, bed a little bit. It's really bile It's um, so she's not bringing up food. Um, but she's just trying to make a little bed, so I'll leave her be. Hopefully, she won't be sick again. Um, but I'll come back in about 20 minutes and see how she's doing. The chances of Michaela making this afternoon's flight are getting slimmer and slimmer. The aircraft engineers have called Ross with news about the muntjac deer. The trap he set has been sprung but it's not quite what Ross was hoping for. Just had a phone call off Don this morning, and um, we've got Fox. So um, we're going to go over now. We'll move the Fox to somewhere a bit safer. It's not ideal for a Fox or a deer. And uh, we'll take it from there again and just see what happens. You all right? You all right? Yeah. I've got loads of apples in. What, just out here? No, I'll bring them I've, got, I've been buying them and bringing them in here. Well, we need, well stop doing that, then. Sorry. We need to try and get them a little... I've been bunging them in the cage. Sir. Oh, that's okay. If you put them in the cage, that's okay. That's no. fine. Okay, no worries. All right, mister. So what I'll do is I'll cover that up now. All right, mate. You're in quite good condition for a fox. Just to keep him a bit calmer. You see, he was getting really agitated there, so we want to try and cover him up, keep him, uh, keep him a little bit calm. <laughs> Ross is taking the fox to a more suitable location somewhere well away from Heathrow's busy runways. Right, give me five, ten minutes, Don, I'll be back, all right? Two miles away, a local park is the perfect spot to release the fox. Go on, then. Hopefully, it'll be all right here. As quiet as you're going to get, like I said, round here. One fox safely relocated. But the muntjac is still at large. Then what we'll do is we'll take the trap back now, and um, we'll try and go for our intended target, the deer. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we don't get another fox. Where are we going to stick this this time? Exactly where it was. Exactly where it was. The trap is back in its original location. Now all they have to do is put the bait in. Don's the man for that job. Go on, Don, do your magic. What, what, what recipe do you want to give him? Uh, two carrots and one apple. I mean, mate, break the carrots up, mate. Come on. There you go. That's fine. I'll see it. Got enough in there to feed a herd. Oh, Cheers, Don. Let's go. Trap set, now they must wait. At the Ark, Michaela the Terrier has been sick again. It's quite a lot of vomit in there, um, and it's not like the bile vomit she had earlier, it's more sort of worrying. Hey, your waggy tail, you're very unwell. The vet's instructions were that if this happened, Michaela shouldn't be allowed on this afternoon's flight. Her owners, waiting in Ghana, won't be picking up their dog today. That last sort of sick event is a little bit concerning, so we, we wanted to see um, another vet. She's only a little dog, and that's quite a lot of volume of liquid to lose. 
time for Anne to deliver the news. Hi, um, my name's Anne. I'm calling from the Animal Reception Centre at Heathrow Airport in London. Hi, um, we've got a little dog here that's um, in transit from Dallas through to um, Accra. She has been a little bit sick today, so the vet has advised that the airline shouldn't fly her today. Yeah, Ho hopefully tomorrow, um, but he's not fit, fit to fly today. Thank you. All right, take care then. Bye. He just said it appreciates the call. Um, so with any luck, she'll be fit to fly tomorrow and we can send her on to Ghana. Every year, the Ark sees thousands of different species pass through its doors. For new starters, it's a steep learning curve. A curve which one of the newest staff members, 20-year-old Michelle, is just beginning. You get something in and maybe you've never seen it or never even heard of it before. Sometimes I panic a bit, I'm like, oh, am I going to remember all this? But I do enjoy it. Every day you learn something new. Today, Michelle is looking after a new arrival all the way from Saudi Arabia. We've just had a bird come in from Jeddah. Um, basically, we're just going to take it through, just generally health check it, make sure it's OK, uh, all its wings are OK, make sure it had enough water during transit, seed, etc. An important part of the Ark's responsibilities is identifying the species of parrot. There's tough legislation in place controlling the transport of endangered species. Sometimes, people label rare birds as common ones to try to get around the law. I just need to get a general idea of what, um, what we're dealing with, make sure it's not endangered or anything that we shouldn't be transporting via air. Michelle has a bird book ready, but with more than 300 species of parrot, it's hard to know where to start. What part should I be looking under, Stu? Because obviously there's going to be hundreds of birds in here. Right, let me see. Right, a book. I wouldn't have a clue, sort of, like I'm taking these all the different types. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go through that. What you do, you just look for what sort of parrot is it? What do you think sort of parrot it could be? I honestly have no idea. Right, it's an Amazon. I'll give you a head start. I'm not sure if it's something with his right wing when he was trying to spread it out earlier. Each bird has a, depending on which whereabouts, different locality colours, so slightly different. He's definitely got the white bit on his beak, which kind of looks similar to this part here, though. It appears to be either a yellow-naped Amazon or a yellow-crowned Amazon, but the tiny difference in appearance could make a huge difference in outcome. Yellow-naped Amazons are seriously endangered. It's estimated there are only 10,000 left in the wild. If it is one of these and its paperwork is wrong, it'll be seized and its owner won't be getting his bird back. Time for a second opinion. What did you think it was? Well, I thought it was a yellow nape to start off with, and then like, when we were going through it with MT, I thought it was a um, yellow crown. Some yellow napes do have the yellow across the crown yeah. as well. Dare I ask what it says on the paperwork, or yellow, is it? Yellow crown. Does it? Mm. Yellow naped or yellow crowned, this parrot will await an expert opinion to determine its fate. Ark supervisor Stuart is on his way to help a passenger travelling to Rome. We just had a phone call from Alitalia in Terminal 4 departures. Um, they've got a dog that I think the box is too small, or something along those lines, so he's taken the box out because I believe it's a Yorkshire Terrier. Give them a new box so they can travel on. There are strict rules about transporting animals on flights. The box has to be big enough for the animal inside, high enough for it to stand up, and long enough for it to turn round. I hope that's big enough. The owner's box is too small. But so is Stuart's. Probably need a bigger box, actually. It's quite a long Yorkshire Terrier, isn't it? Hey, need a bigger box. We judged it all wrong, unfortunately. We were planning on a smaller Yorkshire Terrier. And that's not the only problem. I've just been told by Roberto that Ali Italia read that the flight's in half an hour. There isn't enough time for Stuart to get to the Ark and back before the flight. The only chance for Lily is for him to call a colleague and get them to rush to the terminal. Can you come out with a bigger box? 
Yeah, there's a box uh, just outside the cat wing that would be perfect. It's Yorkshire Terrier, but it's quite a tall, leggy one. All right, mate, cool. Bye. Uh, Kay's on her way, so... Half an hour to get from the Ark to Terminal 4. It should be plenty of time. At the Ark, the unidentified parrot has been moved to a more permanent enclosure. Animal Health Inspector Debs is on her way to put an end to the speculation. Just been asked if I can identify it, um, which I may or may not be able to do. We'll see. Hiya, can I come down? Come on then. Good boy. That's lovely. You can see you a bit better now. Okay. Well, I just wanted to spread his wings out a little bit so I can see the colour of the um, bend of the wing because if he's a yellow nate, Amazon, he shouldn't have any red on the bend of his wing. And as you can see, he's got quite a bit of red on the bend of his wing. And the beak colour suggests to me that it's a yellow crown rather than a yellow nate. That would be my opinion. One parrot identified. It's legal. It'll now stay at the Ark for 14 days while a faecal sample is sent to a lab to make sure it's not carrying any diseases. I personally, I don't think it's eaten anything, I personally would hoof it out of that cage hmm. um, because I don't think it's coming out to eat. Okay. Let it out. The next new learning experience for Michelle, how to get a parrot out of a cage. The teacher today Avian expert staff member Lawrence. Spin it round then up like that. Yeah. He should hopefully climb onto the perch or onto the floor of the cage. So slowly, slowly turn it round now. And as you turn, hopefully he'll also sit, sit on the perch. So you feel alright there? Yeah. Just make sure that perch doesn't it's quite in this. It's in there quite tight. Yeah. And then put the whole thing, don't worry about the water and change that. With any luck, it's going to climb out. Onto the cage. Then lower the cage back down. With any luck, he'll climb onto the platform. One. This is Less stressful for the bird that way. This will be the parrot's home for the next few days, under Michelle's keen supervision. I, I really want to keep an eye on this bird. If you ever see a bird or any animal out personally, you know, have to stay here. It's never nice. Like That is never our objective here at the Ark. We want to get animals in. We want to try and get them out stress-free, back to the owners. I promise every time I come down here, he'll be the first bird I come to see. <laughs> In Terminal 4, Stuart is still waiting for colleague Kaylee. A journey that should have taken five minutes has already taken 20. It's getting a bit urgent now, obviously, because the um, flight's due out shortly and they've still got to take the dog. So it's got to go through all the security checks, it's got to be x-rayed and everything else before it can go on. So um, but it's all, always the case that when they when we get this call, it's always very last minute. It's never like, yeah, you've got three hours to sort it out. It's like, uh, you've got half an hour. <laughs> So, it's already been 20 minutes. As Stuart starts to panic, Lily the Yorkshire Terrier's just beginning to relax. She was a bit nervous before, because she's in the, she never been to airport before. Uh, I walk with her every day, two times per day, but it's not like in, in the airport. In the airport is much, uh, much busier. Lily's getting used to the bustle of the airport. If her new box takes any longer, that might be where she'll have to stay. <sighs> no idea where she is. Got a bit wrong and she's not answering her phone, which is even worse. I just hope she's in the right terminal. Oh yeah, it's come down towards the F, so you, if you're looking at all departure gates, look to your right and then walk down. Oh, I see you. Keep walking down. That was a bit worrying. 
There you go. Sorry about the wait. Thank you, thank you. All right. All right. We've got the box just in time. Uh, the owners are just uh, uh, checking in. Close, close. <laughs> but she got there, that's the main it's thing. It's a bit busy at work, so yeah. I had to do well to get out. But all done. Yeah, we're going to get coffees in. <laughs> at the Ark, Ross has had another phone call from the British Airways engineers. They've caught the muntjac. Oh, oh, we got no chance of catching this. We moved the cage. Oh, right. Oh, you moved it to jump? Yeah. I moved it. Oh, Every time we come over here, we thought, it always comes out of this, this cracker. Right. What, on the far end? Yeah, in here. Yeah. So we, that's where we moved it to, just here. And uh, you can just call me Grizzly Adams from now on, mate, all right? He went in there last night, but the trap didn't go off. He was very smart. What, all the food had gone? Yeah. yeah. Hello. Right, the sooner we get him in the thing, the sooner we get him out of here, the better. Ross wants the deer covered as much as possible to keep it calm. Deer are notoriously susceptible to stress. They can suffer a condition called capture myopathy, where being caged causes a prolonged adrenaline fueled flight response, which overloads the deer's heart and kills it. It's big much out there, they're really, really flighty animals. So, uh, the sooner, the sooner we can get him somewhere safe and let him out of bed, because there's, there's every chance he could sort of hurt himself in a cage, which would, uh, which would defeat the object of what we're trying to do. Ross finds the perfect place to release the deer away from the dangers of the airport. All right, OK. Getting, he's getting quite stressed now, so we want to try and let him out as quickly as we can. Um, there's a big river in the way which sort of acts as a divide going anywhere towards the motorway at all. Nice big woods, veg, nice vegetation over to our left, so it should be fine. So, uh, so we let him out. Animal welfare is the top part of what we do. It doesn't always have to be within the confines of the ark, what we do. Um, it can be sort of anywhere. Heathrow Airport's massive, so we can, offer, we can offer a role in and around the airport as well. He couldn't have done it without the help of the two British Airways engineers. Yeah, Don and Tom. They might have to start doing, <laughs> they might have to start doing some real work now. No, good on them, man. It's, it's not always nice for someone to show to show willing. It's all too easy to say, whatever, it's not my problem, that deal will be all right in there. It's always good to know there is people out there like that. So, so we'll go back now and, and we'll go and say thanks to them and, uh, and then we'll head back to the Ark. Michaela, the airsick dog, made her flight to Ghana the following day. It's nice to see her go on to her destination anyway and she'll be back with her own, I think. And the yellow-crowned Amazon was cleared 14 days later to be reunited with a very happy owner. <laughs> <laughs>